How can I work with a team on a collaborative project in the TIA portal? Since the release of TIA portal version 14, there is a new option that allows us to do this. TIA portal multi-user engineering. With multi-user engineering, I can divide tasks either based on devices or functions and thus complete different engineering tasks in parallel, which shortens the overall development time of my project. What do I need to do this? First of all, a colleague with whom I can work with on a project. There are only two of us, but theoretically, multi-user engineering offers you the option of working with up to 25 people on a project at the same time. What's the concept on how it works? First, I have a multi-user server. The multi-user server uses a software application that's installed independent of the TIA portal and on which I can store my collaborative projects. Each user, who is called a client, downloads the local work status of the multi-user server project, called a local session. In this local session, you can make changes and upload them back into the TIA portal. In our example, we've already set up and configured the multi-user server. This means that we can immediately begin to work in the TIA portal. First, I have to set up the connection to the multi-user server in the TIA portal. To do this, I look under Options, Settings, and there I find the item Multi-user. Now I can add a new multi-user server connection. After assigning a server alias name, in our case Multi-user, I enter the connection data here. I obtain these from the administrator, who has also set up the multi-user server for me. In our case, the IP address is 192.168.0.200, and we're using the port 8735. By clicking Add, I've now set up a connection to my multi-user server in the TIA portal. In the next step, I have to save the collaborative project on the multi-user server. I find a new dialog under Project, specifically Manage Multi-User Server Projects. After selecting the multi-user server I just set up, I can now add a new project to the server. The default path of the current project is used as the source path. By clicking Add, I've now uploaded this project onto the multi-user server. Now I want to create a local session of the multi-user server project. I select the multi-user server project and click on Create Local Session. Using the Create command, this new local session is created and opened. Now I've completed all the necessary preparations. To participate in collaborative engineering, I also need to specify the connection to the multi-user server in the TIA portal settings. As you can see in my case, I've already done this, and now I can connect to the server by selecting the appropriate server in the dialog Manage Multi-User Server Projects. By selecting the project which Anne-Marie has uploaded onto the server, I can now create my own local session. Now the collaborative engineering can begin. Before starting though, it's useful to divide the work tasks among the team. While the TIA portal does assist in detecting conflicts, the organization of the work is the responsibility of the team. How do I know that I'm working in a local session? First of all, there's an additional toolbar displayed above my project. That's where I have all the necessary tools to work with multi-user engineering. In addition, a small icon shows me whether I have right access to the server project or not. I can also see a white flag in front of certain objects in the project. The flag indicates to me that I can edit this object in multi-user engineering. Before I can edit an object, I need to mark it. The easiest way to do this is to click on one of the flags. Marking it causes two things to happen. First, only marked objects can be transferred to the server project. This means that the changes I make to an unmarked project can't be transferred to the server project. Second, the marking indicates to my colleague, in this case Richard, that I want to edit the object. So I first mark all the objects that I want to edit today. In my local session, this shows up as follows. 
The objects marked by Anne-Marie are denoted by a yellow flag. This indicates to me that she's reserved these objects and is editing them. If several people are working on the project, I can read about what they're doing in the usage info in the context menu. But if I want to edit a reserved object, I need to be aware that my changes may be overwritten the next time Anne-Marie checks in. I can also try to mark a yellow object. In this case, a red flag is displayed, illustrating a conflict situation. Because users should only work with conflicts in exceptional situations, I remove my mark. After I've marked my module, I can now make changes to it. To do this, I open the module with the conveyor and make only a minor change. In our case, I changed the threshold value of the counter from 10 to 15. I'd now like to make this change available to Richard in the multi-user server project. This means that I first have to check into the server project. There's an extra check in button on the toolbar for this purpose. After pressing this button, I'm once again presented with an overview of all the objects that are now going to be transferred to the server project. When I press the Start Check-In button, the objects are transferred into the server project. The end of the check-in is typically completed with a refresh. This means that I've retrieved the latest version of the server project into my local session. That's exactly what happens when I press OK. Now the server project also contains the changes I've made. If a change has been made to the objects in the server project, this is made visible by refreshing the marking of the objects. In order for me to transmit the latest version of the objects into my local session, I have to perform a refresh. I do this by clicking the Refresh button on the multi-user toolbar. A refresh editor opens in which I can start the refresh operation. After successfully refreshing, I have Anne-Marie's changes in my local session. I open the conveyor and I can see the changed value of 15. Some changes in the local sessions are not supported by multi-user engineering. These include changes to the hardware configuration. If I want to perform these changes anyway, I can make them directly in the server project. To do this, I switch to the server project view. I click on the button on the multi-user toolbar. When I do this, my local session is right protected and the server project view opens up in the lower part of the screen. While I'm working in the server project view, the server project is blocked for other clients. To show you a hardware change, I will activate the web server in the PLC. I go to the device configuration in the context menu and I now look at the properties. And under Web Server, I activate the option to start the web server. By saving this, my changes are transferred into the server project. The server project view closes automatically and the server project is made available to all the other clients again. If I want to make changes in my local session, I simply perform a refresh again. And that is multi-user engineering in the TIA portal. In addition to the functions demonstrated, multi-user engineering also supports a range of other objects like user-defined data types and even variables and HMI objects. And that is how efficient engineering for team players works in the TIA portal.